how to get a job as a founder. Sometimes you'll find yourself in a position where you have to go get a job for one reason or another. Right now, we are dealing with a recession, major, massive market meltdown where people are being laid off. You might be in a situation you run out of the funds for your startup. So you have no more runway left. You have to go get a job. Different situations. What's difficult is that it's not easy for a founder to get a job, not just psychologically and emotionally, but in terms of the market. And what I mean is quite often founders are um, overqualified or they're not quite the people that employers want to hire. So let's think about this for a moment from the perspective of a company owner or a hiring manager in another company. You're looking at a resume and the founder or someone who was a founder had a startup applies and says, I need a job because I just need to make some extra money. Well, that doesn't really compute. Now, there are always instances where you're going to find someone who's willing to give you work because they know you're a founder. Maybe it's temporary. Maybe it's contract. This is where I recommend the founders maybe try to do some contract work or do some gig work because there's no need to play around and pretend that this is a long-term thing because that's what employers are looking for. But think about it from a, a perspective of a, an employer. I need an employee and I have a founder come to me and clearly they just need to make extra money and clearly they want their startup to work and they're just saying, I'm going to do this job as I you know, build my, my startup. What do you think I'm going through as that hiring manager or the company owner, the entrepreneur? I don't want my employees to be distracted. And so therefore, I may start to think that the founder is unemployable. And many of us founders are unemployable completely. I am totally unemployable. I just do not work. It's very difficult for me to go just work a regular job in a company. Yet, I sort of do. Let me tell you the situation that I was in when I was in China and we had received some seed investment and I had moved over to China to make it work. That was part of the con contract, if you will, the operating agreement for the investment that I had to move over there and be the general manager and, and run the startup or the CEO. And the startup tanked. Well, I ended up needing a job. So I got a job as the executive VP for global operations at a consultancy. But how did I position myself? Because again, if I was hiring a founder and they said, well, you know, my whatever company is not doing so well and I just ran out of runway and I need to make some money, I'm thinking to myself, eh, maybe not the best hire. I'd rather have someone who just is not going to be distracted, just wants a job, wants to stay one job for a long time, obviously, depending on the type of job. Well, it's important that you're just going to have to position yourself to make sure that you give the employer utmost confidence. Again, exceptions to every rule. Sometimes there are jobs where I don't care if you're doing your job on the side, maybe something that's very performance-based or what have you. But if you want the security of regular employment, like a salary, well, you're going to have to present yourself and compete with other people who are applying, who aren't founders, who don't have multiple things going on, or maybe distractions, reasons not to focus. When I'm looking at an employee like that, keep in mind that sometimes being a founder is the best experience in the world. Sometimes founders, and I, I know lots of companies that actually seek former founders, but they want to make sure that that employee is not just going to jump ship to go do their own startup at any moment. And there's always a danger. And I'm always worried. Like, for example, in remote work, if, if you want remote work, I'm worried that you're working on your startup while you should be working on a job, which is time card theft, right? And that's going to be a, a competing agenda. It's always going to be in the back of my mind. And as an employer, I may treat you a little differently. So how do you do this? Well, the reality is no one can stop you from going and doing your startup unless they lock you up with different agreements. But you want to present yourself as employable as possible and give them a reason to hire you as an employee. 
And I'm going to just walk you through the different things that you should consider before you start talking to potential employers and take yourself out of the job market and make this search or this job search a lot harder than it needs to be. So first, what you have to explain is a reason. And let me get a thicker pen here. I usually have the thickest pen going on. All right. So what you have to do is explain a reason. And then you have to assure commitment. So that should be right on your resume because a lot of times founders, their identity gets wrapped up in their startup. And rightfully so, it happens. But when I'm going out there, I'm not saying I'm the founder of this company and I just explain I'm the CEO of this company and I happen to be the founder. If my co-founder or founder credential does not help the person make a decision and actually is a distraction, I'm not going to put it in there. So I'm going to readjust my resume and my LinkedIn or let's just say being a CEO is just, you're way overqualified. Like who's going to hire someone who was a CEO. You can just say that I was a founder, but you want to give a reason that you have shut that down and you want to assure commitment. The best answer is it was great experience, but it just didn't work out. I'm ready to go back in the workforce. I would just like to work at a company where I can use my skills and that's no longer a part of what I want to do. I'm going to take the experience. I'm going to apply it in my new position. And you have to assure that commitment to the, to the, the employer. And so when I'm interviewing former founders, I really sit there and ask some serious questions. And typically, if the founder is older, has kids, different obligations, that makes me feel a lot better. But if they're just young and I just know that they're going to be freelancing and freewheeling and dealing and jump ship anytime. Well, I'm going to think twice before hiring because there are a lot of other people who may be qualified to do the job that aren't going to be thinking about their own startups. So you want to share commitment. And that just all starts. You want to explain that on your LinkedIn or your resume. And so, for example, this is a common mistake that people put out. They put out on their LinkedIn when they're looking for a job that they're still employed at their startup. Well, what do you think that employer is going to be thinking? So you want to clearly indicate that I've shut that down and now I'm just ready to enter into the workforce and explain that and really legitimately mean that commitment. What happens to your startup then? That's the question that people want to ask. And if you're legitimately just needing to work a job to get runway, then I just happen to you know, get into my job and then they just gave me startups to run and I still have my own. And they know that, they know that, but I present so much value to them. They just know to retain me that they need to allow me to do my own startups. And I'm you know, very performance-based and we just worked it out where they're very happy with my performance. But that takes time to build and you have to demonstrate that. And I had worked with the, you know, the, the investors and with the company. And so they knew who I was. And so when I explained, I'm ready just to, you know, go and work and they gave me the position. Well, I just said, you know, this, this is ready. I'm ready for this to be my life. I'm just, I don't need to be the CEO of my own startup anymore. So you want to put that on your LinkedIn and your resume and you want to make that very clear then what happens is say you're running your own startup and this is what's really cool. I think personally that you can figure out, say you're working a job. Now you're extending, you know, your runway and you want to see if your startup can, you know, basically be autonomous. And this is really great. And I think this is a good exercise for founders that, Now you got runway, you're making money. Well, what if your startup could just exist on its own? What would you do in terms of a startup just being autonomous in terms of automation? Maybe you have an opportunity to build something that doesn't require 
your hand-to-hand combat trading dollars for hours and just goes out there. So maybe you now can productize something and you've got the room, you've got the runway to work on your products and put it out there. So for example, let's say that you're in, you know, some type of service thing or what have you, you now have time to set up your website to autonomously deliver it, independently become validated without you having to do that work. And I think this is a really interesting opportunity that often founders overlook because you can still run your startup. So let's say, for example, you've got a SaaS platform that you had to do all the heavy lifting and deliver and, you know, what have you. Well, now you've got the time to work on that and just put up the SaaS platform and just let it sell itself without you having to do anything manual to it. Or you're going to be pressed for time and you're going to come home and you're going to have to fill all those orders and, you know, do different things. And, and you're going to run out of time, but that time and the pain of that is going to sort of push you to innovate and automate and remove the friction points and what have you. Let's say if you've got a product, now you're going to outsource different things like fulfillment and what have you. And guess what? That could turn into a real great business. At the same time, if it starts to take off and people are enjoying it, finding you online and referring other users, well, now you've got a startup and that's the type of stuff investors really look for. I actually get pretty impressed when a founder builds something that's just making money without their constant 24-hour involvement and they show the scale of what is happening, the growth. And then they say, if you invest money, then I can go full-time in this. And then now the growth is really going to go. But I've proven out that this startup is very valid because I'm not the one validating it by pushing it. My customers are, the market is, the revenue, all that good stuff. So you want to make sure that you position yourself properly. And remember, think of it, take a step and put yourself in the shoes of that hiring manager or the entrepreneur, the the general manager, the person who is going to be hiring you, the owner of the company, how are they going to perceive what you're doing in the sense that how you communicate? And I, I have founders who come and approach me with that all the time. And it's the same thing with entrepreneurs and any business owner. And they just say, I just need to make extra money. Do you have a job? I'm not going to hire that person. I want to know if, that they're really ready to commit and work. And nothing stops you from working and creating value for a good solid one or two years and putting that on your resume and getting that experience. And nothing stops you from doing that. And then if something really pops, jumping for another opportunity, it's not like you're beholden. And you have to be working there for the next, you know, 100 years or different things like that. But at least demonstrate that you are going to present real value to the employer and that you've actually thought about it and make sure that your identity and the way that you present yourself and you're marketing yourself in the world doesn't conflict with what you're saying when I need a job, but my resume is all about me being a founder and the CEO and what have you. So that's what I would recommend to do if you are in this situation, especially right now, where you do need to get a job and really consider. Sometimes it's just nice to have a job, but then also have the resource and flexibility to pursue other things. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next video.